and welcome to another video. My name is Mabel. If you're new here, this is Mabel Journals and we talk about books and we talk about journals. So in today's video, we are going to be going over my 2024 reading journal. This is a big one for me because I just feel like I finally got the hang of it. I know it's weird, like I've done this every year for like, I think this is my third year. And it just feels like you always learn something new every single year. And so I'm super proud of my evolution. And especially having gone through my 2023 reading journal, if you haven't seen that one, I'll put it in the cards. I'll also put my 2022 reading journal because I did a 2022 and a 2023 reading journal together but I also did a 2023 at the end of the year, what it looks like. So both of those will be somewhere in my videos. I'll put them up in the cards as well. But without further ado, let's just get straight into it. We're gonna do a quick flip through tour of my reading journal for this year. A lot of things have changed. If you haven't noticed, it's not a square notebook. It is a B5, but I still love her. Anyway, let's continue and my hands will see you in just a second. All right, so here's the new gal. This is my 2024 reading journal. This is a B5 notebook. Usually I stick to my, as you saw in my other video, my square notebook, but for this video, well, for this year, I should say, I wanted to do something different. I wanted a challenge on my layouts. I wanted to just try something different. You're gonna see I did a lot of my layouts very, very different. And I really took my time trying to figure out which layouts I actually use and which ones I will benefit from this year. And so that's why you see it this way. But like I said, this is a B5 notebook. I got this from Archer and Olive. This is one of their like unlimited, un, uh, not unlimited. They're one of their limited collections. It was a Halloween edition. I don't know why they don't bring these back for Halloween because a lot of people loved it, but it's just sparkly. And then it also has like uh, the sprayed edge as well, which I love it in my books. I love it in my journals as well. So this is what we're looking at. I had dis was deciding yet last year for my 2023 journal, which one of these two I should pick. And I ended up sticking with this one because it was the same size as my journal from 2022. But after I finished with this one, I was like, okay, I've had enough of this layout. I'm ready for something new. So I stuck with something new and I, or I decided to do something new, which is what I decided to do with this journal. And I'm so happy that I did. I feel like everything has been working out really well with this journal and I just love it. So starting off with my very first page, this is my intro page. I just decided to put like a bunch of washi tape, stickers, all that stuff. Last year, if you saw my other video, I talked about how I attempted to do Dark Academia with my other journal, but then I ended up using my colors and using all of that. So this year I really wanted to stick to that theme. This is my first page. I decided to do my rating system a lot more simple instead of being too critical like I was in my other one. I feel like usually I have a really good idea of what the rating is like right when I finish reading it, but I try to give it a little bit more time. But sometimes it's just really point blank. Like it was either my favorite book, can't stop thinking about it, will always recommend, or I, it was a great read, I'll always recommend and I loved it, but it wasn't my favorite book. Or it was a good book, I liked it, solid read, three stars. Or you go downhill, this is where it starts going downhill, two stars, heavily flawed, or one star, I either didn't finish it or it was terrible. And hopefully I just DNF'd it and didn't finish it and knowing that it was terrible, but yeah. And then this is just my title page. And you'll probably see like these squares here. This is me attempting to do something like, and then I didn't end up liking how it looked. So that's me covering it up. But this is an index page. I decided to do this is in pencil just to keep the lines straight. If you saw my other journal, the like it just like wiggles around the page and it really bothered me. So I decided, let me just do these lines and then once I'm done, I'll erase it. But for now, this is what it looks like. I don't know if I have enough pages or enough space here for it. I have one more page here. So hopefully it doesn't all fill up. We'll see. Uh, this one, one of my TikTok uh, mutuals w did something like this, and I really liked how that looked. It made it easy for that person to know, you know, how many 
books they read in the year. And so I decided to do that. I also decided to like number the, the book. So here it says 15 to find me. That's the 15th book I read this year. So yeah, and this is just me highlighting that book as well. And then this is my page for new releases. So whenever I see a book that's about to come out, I just put it here along with the day it comes out in parentheses. These are books I purchased and these are book uh, arcs that were sent to me. These are book recommendations that people give me. I did get a few book recommendations for my other video. So I am going to make sure to put that on here. I think, yeah, I had a few that I really wanted to write down. So I will definitely put those there. And then this one, I decided to do an A to Z challenge. Usually I don't like A to Z challenges or I don't like any challenges because I just feel like a failure if I don't do it. But I decided to do it this year because, you know, it's fun and this one's an easy one. And I feel like it's a good gateway challenge to start because there's really no way to not, I mean, I'm, I just feel like it will make it a lot more creative for me. And there's really no way to fail this one technically. I mean, you'll miss a few letters, but it's not bad. And then this one's my 24 books to read in 2024. I love this page every single year, but this year especially because it just like the whole page filled up like completely since 24 is an even number and it just looks so good. This is my series tracker. I changed this one from last year because it has all like has the series that I started. Like I started all of these and I want to finish them this year. And then these are some that I haven't started that I definitely want to read. So it just makes it easier to keep track of which ones I have left. And then this is my daily reading. I changed this one. This one's the one that had all the colors on it and it was two pages. So this is the one that was two pages last year and you kind of just highlighted the full thing. This one's just a little bit easier. Like I just have the months there, the, the months here and then the, the days here. And I just do it in any gray color. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite page, which is my book shelfie. And I decided to do black this year because, you know, dark academia and it matches like the journal as well. So it just fit really well. I also put like some crazy stickers here just cause it's just fun. And then instead of doing a statistics page at the end of the year, I decided to have one layout for all of it just to keep track of it and just have it because I like to compare them to each other. So having a page like this makes it easy to kind of compare to the months before or after. And then this is my genre tracker. If you know about my genre tracker last year, it just gets filled up completely usually. So with this one, it's just a lot easier to fill it out. And I also decided I'm just gonna mark it, even if a book is like a romantic fantasy, I'm gonna mark romance and I'm also gonna mark fantasy because I just wanna keep track of what genres I'm reading. It doesn't matter how many books fall in each genre. And then this is the monthly reviews. I kind of wish I fixed this a little bit, but that's okay. So this is how I'm doing my monthly ones now. I decided, I saw this, I'm gonna credit the person that I saw do this. I'm also gonna credit the person that showed me this because I didn't realize they had an Instagram and I have been using this forever and I have never given them credit, but I definitely got it from someone. And then, yeah, this one I also got from someone else and I just combined the two ideas to create this. Here, I'm, I just keep track of the days I read that book and in that same color, I do the rating. I decided to do little circles this year just to change it up. And then here I put the amount of pages I read every day, very similar to what my layout was last year. And then I'm also gonna give credit below to the person that did this particular layout. I just thought it was so pretty and so easy to understand. I also felt like usually I write a whole block of everything, just like my mixed feelings, my review, the synopsis. But this year I decided to do the synopsis on one side and then the, like my review on the other side. I think I'm gonna add more of these cause I think I care about like the location that it's set and then my actual rating like 3.5 or 3.4 or whatever. Cause here I, I do put the star, but I also like to write it down. So I might add more, but 
that's basically it for now. I just wanted to give you guys a little taste of what it looks like. If you want to see the rest of the journal, I am going to have a flip through for January and for February in my next in another video where I go over the books I read on those two months. So just take a look at that. And yeah, if you haven't already seen my other video, you should check it out. But yeah, that's the end of this one. I hope that you enjoyed. All right, so that concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed this. I honestly had a lot of fun just flipping through. I'll also have my January and February flip through in my reading wrap up for January and February. So if that's up, you should check it out. If you're interested in seeing how I do my journal spreads for each book, you can follow me on my book talk and on my Instagram. I tend to just do a reel on, usually I did every single book, like a reel for every single book, but now I've changed it to be anything that's rated a three or higher is usually a reel. And anything that's lower than that, or if it's just a problematic author or a problematic book but I read it you know on my own time I don't want to obviously give them more spotlight so I don't showcase those books but for the most part that's just how I've been doing it on bookstagram and Instagram and yeah So that concludes this video. If you have any questions, please, please, please leave a comment below. Or if you just want to say hi in the comments, go ahead as well. I love to read your comments, you know that. And like this video if you learned something from it or if you enjoyed it or if you want to see more things like this. And what else? Yeah, just all of those fun social media things you all know how to do, go ahead and do them. And most importantly, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when I post another video. And yeah, that concludes this video. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you on the next one. Bye.